Okay, I'm doing my best to make this. I made this video for like the third time. So, if you're new to my channel, please do not forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. My name is Amelia. So, I have been battling spiritual warfare all this week. I've been getting attacked. I have had a setback. I've gotten discouraged and all that. But at the end of the day, I choose to hold on to God's everlasting hand. And I did promise for another last video that I will tell you all my testimony of what happened four years ago. Five years ago, I decided to take four Benadryls a night instead of just two. So I was taking Benadryl in order to calm my insomnia because I was having nightmares of my ex and to this day I'm still having nightmares of my ex, but there's a twist at the story. Um... Instead of two, I decided to take four because someone I worked with planted four, planted the ideal, the seed that I should take four Benadryl a night. I will only take four Benadryl from Sunday night through Thursday night because those were work days for me. All those other days, I wouldn't take a Benadryl. So taking four Benadryl for five nights out of the week that was like 20 daggone doggone pills i was taking and a week to be honest so i was taking them a week so that was like over 100 pills i would say so i was doing this from what day i would say when i can't remember the months but i was doing this from 2018 till 2019 and this is what happened. This is how it all stopped. This is how it all stopped. It stopped when I went home for my mom. Not for my mom. Say the bad Lord. I went home for my best friend's funeral. And this was my day one. Y'all know uh, my best friend that I still put in my stories and all that. What not. Um, I went to his funeral. And... That night, um, I was just up, and my mom comes into my old room, and she's like, are you all right? I was like, um, no. She said, look where you've been today. And I was like, yes. She said, come on, I'm, I'm going to give you something. I said, you might as well just give me four. She said, one. I said, you might as well give me four. She said, you're going to overdose. You're going to die. I said, I've been doing it. I said, I've been doing it for a while. I said, I've been doing it for a while. I said, I've been doing it from Sunday through Thursday. She's like, you are, she said, you will overdose. You will overdose. And I know once might sound bad enough if you ask me, but four, four. Let me tell y'all something. And I mean this. That night really changed me because I was like, how much pain do I have to go through? I said, I hated the fact I lost one of my day ones. I said, I did something stupid that day too. I ain't going to tell y'all about that. But um, I was like, how much longer I got to suffer? I said, I'm tired of losing people I love. All that. I was just tired. People don't understand. When you're tired, you're tired. But you have to choose. You have to choose at the end of the day. Are you going to throw in the towel? Or are you going to keep fighting? Are you going to keep going on? Are you going to keep holding on to God's everlasting hand? Because I was hurt. And I mean, I was hurt. I was just hurt. And when she gave me one, I'm not going to forget. She said, you're going to tell your father what you've done. So I'm sitting in the front and I just tell, I just told my dad what I did. He's like, you still thinking about him. That's why you're still taking those things. I'm going to be honest. That was the last time I decided not to, I can't remember when y'all. But I know it's been four years since I have not taken a Benadryl. I can tell y'all that. 
taking all of those because I won't even take, I got bad allergies. Y'all know which one I will take? I'll take a Claritin over a, a Benadryl. But I'm going to tell y'all why. I don't need to be reminded, and I mean reminded, you know, of some, you know, of a bad habit. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still here. At the end of the day, I'm still here. And, you know, I'm thankful. I was telling God, I said, God, I'm thankful I'm still here. I said, because 23 year old me didn't think I will be doing this. I didn't think, you know, because I'm going to be honest, when my best friend passed away, like when he passed, that my a piece of my heart went with, with him. I'm not going to lie. A piece of my heart went with him. And um, what I'm going to say, be real about it. It was just. It was just heartbroken because here's the thing. When I wrote my book, when I wrote my first book, he never switched up on me. When I joined the Army, he never switched up on me. None of that. He just never switched up. And when I decided to be a cover model for um, a couple of my books, he really didn't switch up on me. I'm like, wow. And, you know, sometimes it makes me wonder, are there any, are there still, like, real people out there? There you are. You just have to wait on God. I will say that. You have to wait on God. But at the end of the day, I'm just thankful to still be here because if I had continued taking over 100 pills every month for four at night, four five times a week, like I said, that's 20 pills. That's 20 pills. I've already had friends. I had one guy friend. He overdosed on some pills. And he's still alive. And I thank God for that. And I remember one classmate of mine. She got hooked on some type of pills. I can't remember which one. I had no clue she was in rehab until my 11th grade year. And that was when I got depressed, y'all. Because of the whole situation with my ex. I'm like, dang, someone does got it worse than me. Like, I had, a, I thought I had it worse. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. But, you know, I realized why now I'm sleeping better at night. Because I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I was fighting sleep. I was fighting sleep just to make this video. I was even fighting sleep to finish the word. And I was even talking to God. I said, God, I said, take away whatever this spirit is. Because some is I believe somebody wanted me to go to sleep. I believe highly somebody was probably trying to put a spell on me. And then while I was reading another book in the Bible, I said, thank you, Lord. I said, can't nobody tell me you're not real. I'm trying not to choke up. I'm trying not to choke up because the tears they're trying to form right now, but I'm doing my best not to choke up. And there's a reason why, because God is real. And there are people that will fight you and will do anything to say he ain't real. The real ones, the ones that have been through hell and how water we've been through tornadoes earthquakes because i used to have earthquakes because i had anxiety so bad and that was the reason why i lacked christ i lacked the full relationship with him that was it i like and me i tell people nothing you know what i say i don't have that much bad anxiety like i used to and that's what i'm thankful for i'm thankful I don't have that much anxiety. You know, I thought the nightmares will make me go cuckoo for Cocoa Plus. But there's a purpose why these nightmares are happening. The enemy does not want me to move forward. I've already moved forward. I've already moved forward. I ain't going to go into much detail. But the Lord has already blessed me with someone. Ten times better than my ex. And looks ain't got nothing to do with it. Actions do. <clears throat> a lot of times we won't. We want looks, 
we want certain things that a man has to have. And I'm talking about with the physical future, y'all. Why not have be with someone be with someone that's deeply rooted in Christ? Why? I mean, that's my that's my main standard when it comes down to dating a man. He has to be deeply rooted in Christ. My husband just ain't gonna be in and anybody, y'all. I need somebody that's gonna seek after the Lord. I need someone I can pray with. I need someone I can talk to the Lord with. My throat, y'all, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm back. I had to get some water, y'all. I've been talking like all night. Sorry I showed y'all that, but I'm about to get it up. <laughs> My point is, dang, where did I left off? Oh, yes. I'm feeling much better than, okay, no, that's not where I was on. Okay, I'm going to be honest because I was thinking about this today, too. Now I know where I, was, I left off at. Ladies, and I mean ladies. Every time I hear about what a woman wants in a man that's physical, that's physical. Whether he got money, whether he got good looks, all that. His manhood got to be a certain inches and whatnot. I've been with a man before and I didn't let him touch me. Because that's how much worth I had for myself. That's how much respect I have for myself. Because I did not want just any and anybody to get the carnal treasure. I did not allow this man to touch me. So, he told me one night, he told me one time I was in this room, he like, I ain't got nothing. I said, I don't care what you got and what you don't got. I said, what I really care about is how you going to treat me. We didn't work out because he was a sex addict. He, he literally was a sex addict. And I was one of those girls that was just going to let anybody just sleep with me. No, you got to put a ring on it. You got to put a ring on it. We got to say, I will in front of the Lord. And we can multiply and divide and have all the children. And now, you know, now I think about like, and I always talk to the Lord. And Lord knows I get a little ecstatic, very ecstatic. Because at the end of the day, you have to be careful, mindful of who you come into contact with because there's a saying, the enemy was once an angel and he will transform as an angel of light. Okay, so you got to be careful. Someone can might have a nice grin and nice smile and all that, but what does their soul possess? What's the inside of their heart is? Is it black? Is it full of sin? Is it filled with demonic spirits? Or... Is it someone that's restored and renewed, refreshed by Christ? Is this person a new creature in Christ? You have to ask yourself that. I mean, mine is not perfect. But I, I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful that God has even used him. Because it was to the point that, you know, he's not super churchy and all that. And, you know, the Lord had to take me out to church. But the things that I wanted... It was kind of making me turn into, you know, being very religious and whatnot. I was like, hold up. I said, I'm being just like them. And, you know, a lot of times when I say, the reason why I'm saying this, I need y'all to hear me out. I need y'all to hear me out. Sorry, kind of going a little off topic, but I had to say this. Um, People in the church, when someone that is trying to come out of sin they're not going to do the things that you do just because you lift up your hands they don't mean they're going to lift up their hands just because your head is bowed sometimes their head ain't going to be bowed uh, just because you running around acting up acting foolish um, having your wigs flying your, um, you rolling all over the ground you screaming and agony and pain knowing good and well nobody ain't punch you in your stomach you expect for that person that wants to be delivered to act like that True deliverance is going to be illustrated. It's going to be shown. Matter of fact, true deliverance ain't somebody screaming and howling. Ain't nobody doing all that. I mean, real tears might come down, but that don't mean they're going to, ah, ah, 
God, no, no, no. Because some, I looked at some of those people in the church. And I, I ain't got time to act like that. I don't. I used to want to act like that. You can ask the Lord. I did. But now, you know, I'm out the church. And I'm looking and I'm learning what God is really like. What does it really take? You know, nowhere in the Bible are they going to act like that. Do they act like that? The sermon is real. And I'm going to be very honest. The sermon is so real. The sermon is so real. It is so real. And I mean real with a capital R. So you have to have that. Because so many people these days and time are putting up shows. And not a lot of souls are really being delivered and set free because I can tell you this the one like me I ran away from a column because I didn't think he could use somebody to like me there was something else that happened prior to like much much earlier before I decided to take four Benadryl I'm like God can't use me that was something the enemy wanted me to say to think but guess what the Lord uses the mess up people that I love in the Bible. He used Moses. He used David. He used Rahab. Who else? He used Gideon. Paul. I love my sister Paul. Who else he used? A good bit, I can tell you. I can go through y'all. Jonah. Now, I was like Jonah for a while, y'all. I mean, running. And I mean running. I, I don't be honest. I didn't think I would share this testimony with y'all. I didn't really think I would share this testimony with y'all. I was like, Lord, should I share this with them? Because four years ago, I decided not to, you know, I decided not to, you know, take any more Benadryl. <clears throat> because, you know, the things of this world are temporary. I'm going to say it one more time. The things of this world are temporary. Jesus is eternal. Jesus is eternal. So I had to depend on Jesus. I had to depend on Jesus. I had to because if I didn't, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have my ministry and all that. But it's not about me at the end of the day. It's about, you know, lifting up the name of Jesus. It's about, let's see what else. It's about souls being set free from sin. Because what I was doing was sin. I wasn't going back to my first love. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't. And now, here I am, sharing my testimony. Taking a hundred pills a month just to ease the pain of the nightmare. So let me tell you something. The enemy's attacks are they serve a purpose. These nightmares, and I'm still having nightmares of them. I'm not going to trip. I'm not going to lie. I'm still having nightmares of this person. They serve a purpose. But what I'm going to do, overcome that purpose because I am going to move forward. I am going to take that leap of faith and just jump, jump, jump. Because the past is already said and done. There's nothing there between me and this person anymore. Yes, I rebuked him. I rebuked him because I want to see this person go to heaven. I want to see this person go to heaven. I don't have time to rebuke, not rebuke, anybody. I don't have time to condemn anybody. I don't have a heaven or hell to put anyone in. But what I can do is open rebuke them because I don't have time to, you know, Cause he's been on my heart for a minute. He's, I'm not gonna lie, he has been on my heart for a minute. And I'm like, Lord, I just want him to change. 
You want people to change, but that don't mean I'm going to go out to eat with them. No. No. You can love people from a distance. You can still wish them well. You ain't got to hang out with everybody and their grandma. And I realized something that his family, I ain't going to say that family, but his family, they were just a lesson. They were never a blessing. And, you know, I'm just thankful. And I'm thankful I'm here to tell my story. I'm not here to bash anybody. No. I'm just here to say, I don't want the next person to go through what I went through. So if you're taking something to ease the pain, whether it's weed, whether it's alcohol, whether it's sleeping around, whether it's um, pills, whatever, leave that stuff alone because that stuff has real life consequences. Has real life consequences, people. Like I said, I wouldn't have been here. I wouldn't be here if I had known. I mean, I could be probably in rehab. I'd probably be six feet under if I was still taking 100 pills a month. It's just sad. It's sad. And, you know, drug overdoses, they happen every day. So I'm thankful I listened to my mom. But you know what? Even after that one, I said, no more. No more. No more. Because you know what? I'm trying not to cry. I'm trying not to cry. I got Christ now. I got Christ. I have Christ. And I was even telling, I said, Lord, I, I said, I'm fighting sleep because I just want to seek you. I said, I'm fighting, I'm fighting sleep because I want to seek you. Like I can, I talk to him more than I talk to my own best friend. And half the time, y'all go to more, y'all go to people more than you do the Lord. So that's something that's real to say, and it's the honest God's truth. But this is. I'm going to end it with this. I'm going to end it with this. And I mean, I'm going to end it with this. If you are someone you know that does not have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and you want to make him your personal Lord and Savior, do it now while you have the chance. Tomorrow is not promised to nobody. Do not wait until next. To, do not wait until tomorrow. Do not wait until next month, next week, next year, because you don't know what tomorrow will bring. Matter of fact, I'm thankful God still had mercy on me. 2020, when he took me out the church. He took me out the church. He took me out the church because I was going to a place and I wasn't growing. I was going to a place that, I'm going to be honest, I will only go there when something was wrong. I will always seek that place when something was wrong. When in reality, I was tired of going to church, to be honest. I'm like... I'm getting the same thing. I'm like, Lord, something got to give. 2020, coronavirus happened. Churches were being shut down, yet some of them were still wanting to um, preach. But God was removing, removing the scales from my face and realizing and made me realize that I had to just seek him. I had to seek him. I had to repent because I was still living a lukewarm life. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. And it's not, and I'm going to be real. Being lukewarm is not what you want to do because the Lord will spew you out. You're neither hot, you're neither cold. You're just somewhere in the middle. One foot inside the kingdom, one foot outside the kingdom. So you're going to be in or you're going to be out. Make up your mind. And I've already made up my mind. I'm going to be in the kingdom told the Lord, I said, Lord, I just want to seek you. I said, I'm fighting this sleep. I know you want to give me sweet sleep. Lord, I'm, I said, Lord, no. I said, let me just talk to you. Let me just seek after you. I'm scratching right now, y'all. I don't like scratching, but yeah, I, I just, when you're, I'm going to be honest. Like I tell people, and I knew there was something else I meant to say, 
another thing when you are fasting when you are fasting it is not to gain anything physical from the lord it's not to gain no husband it ain't to gain no wife it ain't to gain a million dollars it ain't to gain a mansion it ain't again to, to it's not to gain a mercedes it's not to gain a playstation 5 xbox all that you don't know no 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 it's not to gain anything materialistic it is to break down strongholds, to cast them down, but to also grow closer to Christ. Now, somebody needed to hear this. But, you know, like I said, you couldn't tell. Actually, I was 25 when I rededicated my life to Christ. I was like, you know what? I got to I gotta live for you. I said, Lord, I said, I'm sorry. I said, what can I do? Now I'm going back to the place where my ministry started. And it's a good it's for a good reason. It's for a good reason. Because it's time to wake up the people in that place. It's time to wake up the people. And it's time to tell them that Christ is coming back. So you might want to get your house in order. No, you may want to get your house in order. Because he's coming back. He's coming back. So this is my message, really my testimony, because I, like I said, I look at a Benadryl different now, like I don't want them, don't give them to me, no, because something so small, y'all know what, that's nothing, a Benadryl is so, so small, y'all see my finger, it's so, so, so small, it ain't like a pampering or ibuprofen or sometimes a Tylenol, all them other big drugs and all that, it ain't like them things, mm -hmm. No, it's so small. See, I feel it's so small, yet it has a lot of effect to it. One, one pill can cause a lot of drowsiness, and you can be knocked out. So imagine what four did to me. Just imagine what four did to me. Four pills, four pills a night, five, for five nights out of the week. <clears throat> I'm just thankful to still be here. I'm just thankful to still be here. I really am. I really am. I really am. I really am, y'all. I'm just, I'm still here. I'm still here. Still here. You know, I just pray God continues to use me. You know. Even until he comes back, you know, his son comes back. But I'm just here to do what he's, he's told me to do. Because I don't know who else is suffering. And oh, I know another thing. I know I knew there was one more thing I'm going to say. The ones in the pulpit, do you think they're suffering? There's a good bit of false prophets even on YouTube as well. But do you think they're suffering? Yet there are people like me. I, I suffered. There's people like my sister in Christ. She's suffering. There's a good bit more. We're suffering. Those that are called, they suffer. I ain't gonna lie. Not everybody that's in that pool pit was called. They just got up there because they best friend that's in the church, that's a deacon, said something. They daddy a bishop. They mama an elder, first lady, whatever, said something. It's one thing to be ordained by men, and it's another thing to be ordained by by God. I was running away from my calling, y'all. I'm not going to lie. I was running away. I was running away. So what happened? I had a dream of the passage where um, Elijah put the mantle on Elisha. And it was like God saying, you're next. You're next. I'm like, for real? I said, I'm next for real? I didn't think I would be doing this. I'm like, for real? I said, can you give me a sign? I was like, I mean, the passage was right in front of me, y'all. I ain't gonna lie, it was right in front of me. I'm like, for real? I was gonna say, what? Hey, when you're called, you, it's because 19, you suffered. And you're still probably suffering. 
Because the ones that are in the pulpit, I always say this, they make everything seem like it's um, easy breezy. And it's not. not. This walk is not easy. This walk ain't easy. I tell people that all the time. This walk is not easy. It's not. It's not easy. It's not easy. I tell people that. So that's my message. Ooh, I'm still trying to fight sleep now. <laughs> but I got to go to work, y'all. About to be 11 o'clock. So may God continue to keep you home. He bless you all. Be blessed.